What's going on, fellow cartoonists? Welcome to a- another Cartooning Courses. Um, and today, I thought I would cover something that I think a lot of you may be interested in. It's submitting to magazines. Hey, magazines. Yes, they are still around in this internet age with everything digital. People still grab magazines, read them. And um, a lot of them actually feature cartoons. And some of them don't, but you can also break into those magazines if you can convince them to put cartoons in them, which can happen. Uh, so I thought I'd tell you, I'd, I'd give you a few tips and pointers on submitting to magazines today, and I'll try and make this quick and easy, and so you can hop right to it and put that submission packet ready and just uh, send off your favorite magazine. Um, just a real quick backstory: I've submitted to magazines for quite a while. Um, that was one of the the first publications I've had. Actually, the first, I guess, was in magazines. Like, uh, starting off, I'd submit to smaller magazines and then eventually kind of moved my way up and tried to submit to some bigger ones. Um, there's some magazines I'm still trying to break into. New Yorker. Hey, listen to me. One of these days, I swear. <laughs> so anyway, um, yes, so you can... That It's a good market to break into. Um, magazines like newspapers aren't exactly thriving right now, put it that way. You know, they've, they've had some challenges with the whole, um, again, digital thing. But they are still there and they still have a market for cartoons. So here's my tip. Um, tips. Start with number one. Number one, figure out like what kind of cartoons you do and what market it's good for. Um, I would suggest, and I've actually done this, is go to a physical bookstore, like a real-life bookstore, not Amazon.com, and go down the magazine aisle. Yes, they have shrunk quite a bit, but they still have some pretty big uh, magazine aisles at some places. And check out, like, see what's there, you know, like, um, see what magazines are out there. If, if, if they have a pillow digest and you do a lot of cartoons about pillows, um, that might be a good magazine to approach. So kind of browse around and think to yourself, you know, what am I doing? What kind of ma what kind of cartoons do I have? What would what magazine would it fit into? And if you find some that you feel like are good, pick them up and flip through them and see if there's cartoons in them already. If there are, that's a good sign. It means that they want to publish cartoons. If there's not, um, hey, you can approach them and be like, would you guys like some? Uh, start using cartoons because there's a chance too they may use them online only because um, most magazines have an online presence too. So um, keep that in mind. Just get a nice broad idea of what you know, what you do, where it may fit. Um, once you have that, if you pick up a magazine, like I have a few examples here. This is Esquire, um, and I get this magazine because you know what? They actually publish cartoons. They have not published any of mine. I haven't even submitted to them ever, um, but they do publish cartoons, and I think that's pretty cool. So I get it to read the cartoons and they have like some humor sections. But anyway, when you do find the magazine that you feel would be good for your work um, or that has potential, if you pick it up, there's usually a contact page close to the the front and it's got all the editors and everything in here. And um, Bob Mankoff is actually, he was editor of, uh, cartoon editor of The New Yorker is actually the editor of Esquire now, the, the humor editor. Um, so anyway, they have contact information. When I say contact information, it's a lot of names. Um, sometimes you'll find the email too, and usually there's a contact email, which uh, there is here, looks like. Uh, actually, yeah. Um, okay, so my bad. It's not really like a direct contact email, but it's for information. So I would suggest like with this, you can go to their website and there may be a contact form there, but you definitely want to get a hold of probably Bob Mankoff or an art director. Find out what's going on of how to submit. Um, if you can't find any information online on how to submit, they probably just go with this contact uh, email and, and write them a little message. Be like, hey guys, I'm a cartoonist. I want to submit to your magazine. Uh, how do I do it? And uh, you should get an answer if you don't. Maybe try again, pick up the phone call. There's phone numbers in, in, in the magazines too. Somebody has an answer. Somebody does. Because if there's cartoons in that already, somehow these cartoonists uh, found a way. So that means you can find a way. So, uh, so anyway, browse that magazine aisle. Find the right content for you. When you find the right magazine you feel fitting, you know, send them and you find out how to submit. Send them material that they're going to be interested in. Don't send them crap that's not relevant to their publication. For example, if you're sending out to a dog magazine, 
don't send them content about cats unless it has a dog in it. Um, you know, if you're sending out to a, uh, a teen Vogue, don't send them anything about um, balding guys in their 60s. You know, I mean, you want to be relevant to what you're submitting to. Um, I, I've made the mistake early on in my career. I used to send just gobs of material to these editors that had nothing to do with the publication. But my hope was like they'd see potential, I guess. And no, it doesn't work that way. You need to send them stuff that they would be interested in um, and go from there. So when you submit to, don't overwhelm these editors. Send them like five to ten examples at the most of cartoons. Um, you don't want to send too many because they don't want to, sh you know, uh, go through a pile of stuff and, and figure out like what you have. They just want kind of a quick idea of what you got. Like five to ten samples is probably perfect. Um, if they ask for any, if you have a, if they have a submission page and they ask for any specifics, be sure to follow those guidelines. Maybe they just want three or two. Um, just follow their rules, you know. But just don't overwhelm them. Don't send them like 20, 30, 40, 50 cartoons because that's way too much and they're going to probably throw it in the trash or hit delete, depending how you submit it. Um, so send them just a small example and send them the, the good stuff. You know, Send them the, the, the things that you feel are the funniest, the most fitting, um, the perfect cartoons for their publication. Send that in and, uh, and sit back and wait. Uh, it could be months before you hear a response. Uh, you may not hear any response. You may get a rejection form letter in your email inbox, or you may get it physical, physically mailed to you too, or a nice little rejection letter. Uh, you may get a response. They may pick it up and want to buy it. Um, and I will say, like, you know, the smaller publications don't pay much typically. Um, the bigger, bigger publications like the New Yorker and uh, stuff like that, uh, you can get, you know, paid a lot better. I'm not going to say it's like a living or maybe it is, but um, anyway, it's kind of kind of obvious, I'd say. I mean, the bigger the publication, the more you can expect to probably get paid. Uh, so keep that in mind that, yeah, it may take a while to hear a response and you may not. Um, feel free, though, to follow up if you can. If you have a direct editor's contact info, um, you can follow up, you know, after a month or so. Um, just don't spam them. Don't piss them off by, you know, sending an email every day like, where's my answer? Because uh, that will make them not want to work with you. And yeah, that will kind of do it for that um, that magazine. So yeah, don't piss them off. Don't irritate them. Don't bug them. Um, if they don't get back to you, don't take it personally. It's just everyone's busy. And you know what? It's just maybe the stuff wasn't right. Whatever. Um, there's hundreds, thousands of magazines to submit to. Not all of them take cartoons, but again, some of them have a web presence. Some of them may want to use them for social media even. Um, you just never know. So it doesn't hurt to submit. And I think, again, it's really cool to submit to um, cartoons. And you'll find a lot of them, you know, a lot of magazines take them. I got a whole little pile here. Esquire I showed, showed you already. Um, Entertainment Weekly. Um, you don't see many cartoons, but they have a lot of illustrations that they use. So if you're an illustrator, um, that's a good one to submit out to. Um, and then of course mad too. I got my old, it's got the, it's the holiday issue. Mad magazine. I'm an ex mad intern. So of course that's a big one for me. I love, I love mad and mad is just full of nothing but cartoons and illustrations. So yeah, I mean, again, to recap, um, to summarize, I guess, whatever you want to put it, you know, look for the magazines that are fitting. Um, if they're not fitting, is it anything you can adjust to, or do you think you can create something for that magazine? So check that out, go to a bookstore, go down the aisle. When you find one, see what kind of content they have and see if they use cartoons already. If they don't, it's fine. But if they do, it's a great sign. Find the contact information in the magazine itself or online if they don't have it, um, in the actual publication. Find out, um, if they have any specifics on how you su should submit. If they don't just try, um, you know, send a, again about five to 10 samples. Um, typically to the art director is a good good option if you have their direct contact, uh, perfect. If not, um, you can fill out their little form that they have to contact and just be like, hey guys, um, I'm a cartoonist, how do I submit to you? And a lot of times they'll get back to you on that. Um, and once you submit, you sit there and wait. <laughs> and after you wait for a while, you know what, it doesn't hurt to follow up. If Again, if you have a direct contact, great. If not, it's okay too. But I would follow up if you can and if um, 
just don't be spammy and bug them and piss them off. And when you do get that cartoon published um, in a magazine, it's great. It's like Christmas Day. You open up the magazine, you dig around for your cartoon, you see it in there like, oh, wow, it's there. And I think magazine cartoons are, are, are fantastic. I think it's really, it's always, it's always just a nice little uh, pat on the back if you can get into a magazine and, um, you know, they're still relevant. I, I think a lot of people like the print magazines uh, to actually thumb through. I know I do. And, you know, they're going through a little tough time, just like newspapers, but um, I think they're here to stay. And I think, again, a lot of them are adjusting to the web also. It's been that way for over a decade now, longer than that. Um, so there's a market, you know, they're still, they are still alive and well and um, a great place for cartoonists. So yes, I'd love to hear about like what you're doing. Um, if you have any uh, goals, ambitions, any magazines you want to get into, uh, leave a comment. I'd love to hear them. Um, I'll try to get back. I'm usually pretty good at getting back to comments. Um, but yeah, no, that's, I hope that's kind of a quick, um, gives you a quick idea of how to get into magazines and um, break through. And once again, once you get into a magazine, you can use that on your uh, portfolio, portfolio, put it on your website, um, you know, flaunt it. I mean, you got into a magazine and use that, you know, build up your credentials and doesn't hurt. I would say it never hurts to be published in a magazine. That's for sure. So, all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Again, love to hear your, uh, your thoughts and feedback. And I'm going to grab some more coffee. It's early in the morning. Talk to you later. Bye.